Perhaps on Governor Cuomo's post-session to-do list is setting a date for a handful of special elections. And I'm actually not just talking about that downstate House seat that was left vacant by Anthony Weiner, although that is one of them. No fewer than four assembly seats are also empty, actually. And a fifth will be as soon as Manhattan Democrat Jonathan Bing moves into his new job at the State Liquidation Bureau. However, you should not get your hopes up for some very closely contested contests. Party leaders pick the candidates in special elections, and it's very tough for independents to get onto the ballot. Now, good government groups are calling for the governor to remedy this situation, but would that actually be legal? Yeah, it's confusing. Here to help us untangle the mysteries of New York's election law is Attorney Jerry Goldfeder. If no one can do it, if you cannot do it, Jerry, so thanks for your time. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you again. Good. It's good to see you, too. A very tall order. Let, let's start with this Anthony Weiner seat. There was some confusion as to whether the governor is legally required to call a special election. And perhaps we should just explain to viewers what a special election is, actually. Okay. Well, I don't think it's uh, confusing. When there's a vacancy in a seat of the House of Representatives, the United States Constitution says that the governors of the states shall issue writs of elections. That's the uh, language of the Constitution of the United States, which means uh, it's been interpreted by the courts, uh, the federal courts, uh, that that means the governor calls a special election. Okay. And a special election means that whoever's elected on that day takes office immediately and fills out the remainder of the term. So whenever the governor calls the special election, he has some discretion as to when he can call it. Uh, but whenever he does call it for, whoever's elected to fill Anthony's seat on that day will take office and serve until January 3rd, 2013. Right. Because it's and by just, the way, you know, it's... It's just for the remainder of the term, right? I was going to say it's different right? than for the remainder of the term. Right. Okay. It's different what's than... What's interesting, it's different than the United States Senate. Because the Constitution of the United States doesn't require a governor to call a special election if there's a vacancy for the United States Senate. Ah. Most states, 47 of the states, as a matter of fact, have uh, um, procedures where the governor can appoint a, uh, an interim senator. In fact, that's what occurred uh, recently here when Governor Patterson uh, appointed Kirsten Gillibrand, right. Congressman, Congresswoman Gillibrand, right. to fill the remainder of Senator Clinton's seat. Yeah, it's see now you say that this isn't confusing. I happen to find it quite confusing, and I, I'm so so forgive me, but I, I'm not. How can I help? <laughs> it's not. It's not. First of all, it doesn't make any sense to me why the Senate's rules and the House rules would be different when it comes to vacancies. Why is, does that make sense? Well, it's not that. It's it's what the Constitution provides, and originally, the Constitution provided for election of senators by the state legislatures. Hmm. And so when that changed, apparently they didn't think to include a provision to require special elections like they did uh, from the beginning of the republic uh, for House vacancies. Okay, so the one, um, the one difference here that's important actually to explain to people is that unlike a traditional election where you, co you, you can primary, it's actually quite difficult to get onto the ballot in a special because the time frame is crunched. So turnout tends to be less, right? And then party leaders are able to pick the candidates and that's how it goes. You can run as an independent. We saw that happen in New York 26 with Jack Davis, but you have to collect, I think it's, is it, how many signatures is it actually to get on as an independent? 3,500 for a congressional race. Right. And they all have to be valid and stand up to challenge and you have to do it in not very much time. Right. Well, New York state law um, uh, provides that when there are special elections, uh, the, the nominees of the various political parties are chosen uh, pursuant to the rules of those parties. So the political parties have determined that there will not be primaries uh, under the state law. And, and the reason is, just as you said, uh, that it's a very short period of time. And so there really isn't enough time for a primary and a special election, because then it would take months and months mm. for uh, uh, the seat to, to be filled. So and I, we really do want to fill that seat, fill that vacancy as quickly as possible. Right, because you're actually trying to balance out um, the fact that people don't have representation. I mean, you've got an empty, That's right. you, an empty seat with people who are working for no one. You've got staffers who are, who are there trying to do constituent work with no person who, at the top, no elected official to guide them. 
But then on the other right. side, you want the election to be fair. I mean, here's the thing. I have this press release here from the good government groups from Common Cause New York who says, all right, we don't want these special elections, these assembly of special elections where the government, the governor actually has some discretion. We don't want these to be special elections. We want you to just leave that vacant and have it have it be, take place on the same election day, general election, mind you, not primary, that everything else. Why is that a good idea or a bad one, in your opinion? Well, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, it's not the law. The law is it allows the governor to call a special ele election when there's a uh, vacancy in, uh, in the Assembly or the State Senate. He has discretion to do that. History and tradition uh, show us that governors do that. And the reason governors call special elections is to fill the seat. If the governor didn't call a special election for the five assembly uh, vacancies, then that seat, those seats would go unfilled, I believe, until next year. Um, Common Cause may have a point that they would prefer political party primaries, but I think the, their goal ought to be to change the law so that when there are special elections that they could there could be uh, truncated uh, time periods where a primary is possible. I think it's probably not possible but their beef is uh, understandably from their point of view that um, uh, uh, enrollees of a party don't have a chance uh, to vote, that it's mm -hmm. the political leaders of a particular assembly district or congressional district or state senate district who have a say. Well, but as you say, it's, it's a balance, what and were, this, way, this way the seat is filled relatively uh, quickly. Right. What we're expecting, and we're not sure yet, and we, we, the governor's office keeps insisting that actually he has not selected a date, but we're expecting that it would be most likely that all of these specials, including the Wiener special, the, the one down in, the, in, that, in that Brooklyn and Queens seat, would be held concurrent right. with, the, with the primary. And is, is that a good idea because people know already to show up at the polls and so therefore yeah, so it, they're it, expecting it? It's Right. The governor has discretion uh, to pick a date for the special, for the, con for the congressional, as well as for the uh, assembly seats. But it, it's an excellent idea. Uh, look, I have not spoken to Governor Cuomo about this, but there is speculation that um, uh, he will choose what is uh, ordinarily called primary day. It's primary day for other elections that are routinely going on throughout the state. Right. It makes a lot of sense to have all these vacancies filled on the same day because it's cost effective, it's convenient. People from the Board of Elections from the various counties around the state are already out and about. The machines are out there. Voters know to show up. So it really does make sense to have all the vacancies filled on one day and it does make sense to have them filled on what is ordinarily a primary day. It's just, it's just a rational way to proceed. I don't know that the governor has made that decision yet. I imagine he will make that decision in, in uh, fairly short order. You know, what's ironic about this is that he wouldn't have had any of it, for at least in at least three cases, he wouldn't have had this problem had he not reached into the legislature and tapped some folks to serve in his, in his administration. I mean, Jonathan Bing, Roanne DeCito, now the OGS commissioner, and then Daryl Towns, who is a housing czar, um, and the other two, Audrey Pfeffer and Nettie Marison, actually retired. One went on to one job, one just retired in general, both from Queens, uh, I believe. So, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's... It's not a problem. I don't, know, I don't know why you see it as a problem. Uh, people leave uh, office uh, uh, from time to time, either to take a position in government or to go into the private sector, to well, retire, Jerry, Jerry. what have you. It, it, I don't see it, it happens. I know, I know. I don't see it as a problem per se, except it's one more thing for the governor to worry about. Just, just that the good government groups say, well, special elections aren't as democratic because, as I mentioned, the turnout is lower and the way that the candidates are picked is not necessarily small d democratic. And so a lot of people get in this way because the contests are actually less onerous than your general special election and the seat is open, so there's no incumbent to beat. Well, that's true. There's no incumbency because there's a vacancy. And whether or not it's more democratic with a small d or less democratic, uh, anybody could circulate petitions to get on the ballot, and all the voters are encouraged to come out. It's true that in special elections, the turnout is lower. It's true that in regular elections, the turnout uh, could be a lot higher than it is. But look, it, for House seats, for Assembly and State Senate seats, there are special elections. That's better, some would say, than if there's a vacancy in the office 
for example, of district attorney. Mm. If, the, if that's the case, the governor appoints a, uh, a replacement. Right. If there's a vacancy in the office of attorney general of the state of New York or controller of the state of New York, the legislature picks right. the replacement. And we've seen that happen uh, quite recently when, when Alan Hevesy uh, uh, was forced to resign. Well, the legislature picked, in my, in my consideration, an excellent candidate, but it was the legislature. It wasn't even a special. Right. So at least here, we have a special election where, where party leaders, party activists, make a determination is as is that as good as a primary well perhaps not but all but other candidates can circulate petitions go on the ballot and the voters have a chance to choose well we shall see what the governor will do of course i want to thank you very much for coming by to try and make sense of all this for us jerry goldfeder it's great to see you you're quite welcome